Mr. District Attorney, starring David Bryan. Mr. District Attorney, champion of the people, defender of truth, guardian of our fundamental rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And it shall be my duty as district attorney not only to prosecute to the limit of the law all persons accused of crimes perpetrated within this county, but to defend with equal vigor the rights and privileges of all its citizens. Here is our star, David Bryan, as Paul Garrett, Mr. District Attorney. A district attorney is not only a prosecutor, he's an educator. It's part of the job to teach citizens that small crimes can lead to big ones. And even the seemingly insignificant laws have their purpose, like the law against hitchhiking. This story starts with a hitchhiker. I wish it had ended there. Hey, looking for a ride? Yeah. All right, come on, hop in. Like I saw you on the highway this time of the night. Head for the city? Yeah. Farm truck dropped me back there by the turnoff. Huh? How far do we have to go? Oh, about uh, 20 miles. You a stranger around here? Uh-huh. Salt Lake City. Salesman. What kind of business? <laughs> Salt. Oh, I'm tired. Driving all day. Nice car. Thanks. You must have a pretty good job. Good money. <laughs> Taxes, wife and a couple of kids. Money doesn't go very far. Eh, not bad, though. I know the roads around here. Oh? If you're tired, I could drive. Would you mind? No. Pull up. Yeah, hey, I'll, I'll slide over. You get out and come on around. No. You get out. Just as easy for you. What's that? Just what it looks like. A gun. I need money, mister, and you got it. Why, you little punk. Put that thing away and get out of the car or I'll slap you right in the face. Do you hear me? Yeah. I heard you. Oh! Oh! I heard you. Hero. Finish this ride without you. Well, there's the body, Chief. Under that sheet. Hmm. Where was he found, Harry? Uh, about 11 miles out in the state highway. Must have been dumped out of a car. Shot five times. One through the neck or through the chest. Large caliber, too. Forty fives. Any identification on him? No, not a thing, Chief. Whoever killed him, we moved all his clothes except shirt, shorts, and necktie. And a pack of cigarettes that were in the shirt pocket. It's all right there on the table. The laundry mark on the shirt might help. Medical examiner say how long he's been dead? Mm, since three or four o'clock this morning. And these cigarettes, were they on him? Yeah. Why, the help any? They might. Look at this. State of Utah tax stamp. Oh? What do you get from that? Utah's a long way from here. It isn't likely that one pack of cigarettes could have lasted the entire trip. It's more probable that this pack is part of a carton he had with him. Hmm. You mean he might have lived in Utah? There yeah, are photostats made of that laundry mark. Get it off on a wire photo to all Utah law enforcement agencies. 
How about photos of the body, too, for identification? Yeah. You don't think he could have been on the road, do you? Walking, hitchhiking? No, I don't think so. That shirt and tie are too good. It's, it's too new for a hobo. District Attorney's Office. Mr. Garrett, Miss Miller. Yes, Mr. Garrett? I want you to call the police lab and have them send a photographer to the morgue room of the receiving hospital at once. Morgue room, yes, sir. Also notify the highway patrol, the county sheriff's office, and all city police units to be on the lookout for all cars bearing Utah license plates. Interview the drivers, check the cars for firearms. I understand, Mr. Garrett. I'm on my way back to the office now. Are you looking for a Utah car on the basis of that tax stamp? He might have been in his own car. I figure this man was murdered by a traveling companion or a hitchhiker. Yeah. Must have been a fool to pick up a hitchhiker, especially at night. Yes, a fool. But the trouble with fools is most of them are nice people. And I don't like to see them murdered. Well, if the killer did take that car, he might be out of the county with it by now, out of the state even. He's had lots of time for a good head start. Just the same, the murder was committed here. I don't care where we have to go to find him, so long as we do find him and bring him back. all you're going to eat, sir? I ain't hungry, I tell you, Ma. Did it feed you good and everything in the army? Yeah. Yeah, everything's fine. How long are they going to let you stay home? Is it a furlough? Is that what they call it? Yeah, but it's just for a day or two. Oh, I don't like the way you're looking. It's so thin and nervous. Ma, will you leave me alone? When's Pop coming home? They ought to be here for lunch in a minute. He worries about you, Lenny. So do I. Way in the army. Never right. Oh, will you can it? I'm not a baby. I'm 23 years old. If you can't be nice to me, at least be nice to him when he gets in. He's not a young man anymore, and he works hard. In that railroad tower? He sleeps half the time. I don't know why you didn't wear your uniform home. Would have been nice for the neighbors to see. I don't want a bunch of neighbors down my neck. I don't even want them to know I'm here. All right, Lenny. But... What's that? Well, that must be him now, putting the car in the garage. Ma, look. Let me see him alone. What? You said he'd be surprised. Well, let me surprise him. Go upstairs or something. All right. But be nice to him, Lenny. Okay, okay. But go upstairs. May, I'm home. May. Hello, Pop. It's you. Yeah, it's me. The soldier boy. What do you mean? Where's your mother? Upstairs. You know what I mean. She doesn't, but I do. I got the letter from the army. Desert her. Are you crazy? Not crazy enough not to get out when I got fed up. Just like that, huh? I'm sick of having nothing. What do I get out of it anyway? He was learning a good trade. Sure, to be stuck in some rotten job all my life. Like you in that railroad tower. It's like a jail. Except you can come and go when you wanna. There are easier ways to make a living. Uh, uh, look, Pop. I didn't come home to argue with you. I, uh... I brought you a present. Some smokes. All my two cartons. Thanks. Why did your mother go up? Is she crying? No. No, I, uh... I just wanted to see you alone. What did you come for? Money? No, I got... I got a couple of hundred dollars. I... I've been working around. What do you want, Lenny? Well, with the army and everything after me, I... I thought you might help me out. I've been thinking of going to Mexico. Maybe get a freight out of here. One going close to the border. It ain't only the army, is it, Lenny? You're in some other kind of trouble. No, no, that's all. Now, Pop, you, you can help me. Put me in a boxcar. You know where they go. Why don't you go back and turn yourself in? Maybe if you went back on your own... I maybe... can't. They got it in for me, Pop. They always push me around. You gonna help me or do you want them to find me and lock me up? I'll help you. But not for your sake. If it wasn't for your mother, I'd let them take you. I'd send for him to come and get you. 
When can I get a train? There's a hot shot freight tomorrow morning. Leaves at 3 a.m. I can't stay around home until then. Look, I'll go down to the yards and wait. Those hot shots don't stop. It'll be four days. The cars will be sealed. You'll need food. Mark can fix something for me to take. You can bring it to the yards tonight. Well, all right. You remember the old spur near the tower? Yeah. A couple of old boxes and flats there. I'll meet you there tonight around 12. Thanks, Bob. Thanks. Wait a minute. You leave this house without saying goodbye to your mother and I'll... I'll do what I should have done years ago. Now get upstairs. Go ahead. Get upstairs and break her heart again. from Salt Lake City Chief of Police. The murdered man's name was Roger Bradley, traveling salesman for the White Desert Salt Company. Is the identification positive? Yes. Pictures, laundry mark, everything. Police there traced the laundry mark. Bradley's wife made the final identification from the wire photos. Mm, all right. Man. Yes, two children, too. And he left there alone? Mm, driving his own car. And that's the one we're looking for? It's almost brand new. Bought it three months ago. Here's the make and license number, body style, and color. Hello, Chief. Hello, Harrington. We just got a report. Hasn't the Highway Patrol or the Sheriff's Office got anything on a Utah car yet? No. Nope. Only three they found so far were family groups. There's one other thing on this report, Mr. Garrett, a list of all the clothing the victim was carrying on this trip. It's a pretty complete description. Yeah, Harrington, I want you to take this list and comb every pawn shop and secondhand store in town. Mm-hmm. See if any of it's been sold or pawned today. We need a description to go on. I can't understand why nobody's seen the car, though. Yeah, well, the killer in the car probably 500 miles from here by now. Couldn't sell it safely. He just took it to run with. The surrounding states have all been alerted. He must have gotten frightened. Ditched it someplace. Miss Miller. Yes, sir? I want a more thorough search of the rural areas out of town. Side roads, gullies, any place where an abandoned car might be hidden. How and you come with me? Huh? Where are we going? Secondhand stores on Skid Row. We'll check some of them ourselves. Well, why secondhand stores instead of pawn shops? Because I don't think our killer wanted to sign a pawn ticket. Not with the kind of merchandise he signed. Hello? Just a minute, Mr. Garrett. Yes, I see. Where? Well, I'll tell him right away, thanks. What was it, Miss Miller? Radio division. Patrol car called in. They think they found the car you're looking for. Where? Abandoned road under an old railroad trestle. The car have Utah license plates? They don't know. Oh, the killer might have stripped the place to avoid identification. Get a fingerprint crew out there. Well, that won't do any good, Mr. Garrett. That's why they can't even tell about the plates. Well, why can't they tell? Because what they found is all blackened and too hot to touch yet. The car's been burned. A brand new car? Why would he do a thing like that? To destroy evidence and cover his trail. Well, there's one thing he won't destroy, and that's the thing I want most. What? The killer himself. This is David Bryan. Before we continue with Mr. District Attorney in the case of the murderous hitchhiker, here's an important message I'd like you to hear. And now back to David Bryan, starring as Paul Garrett, Mr. District Attorney. The salesman had been murdered, his clothing stolen, his car burned almost beyond recognition. Our killer figured to be a hitchhiker. But who was he? Where was he from? And where was he running to? Harrington and I tried to find the answers in the second-hand clothing stores along Skid Row. By late afternoon, we had checked more than a dozen places, with no results. There's a couple of stores in this block, Chief, down by the Mission House. Park by the first one. Right. <laughs> Chow hounds lining up early. 
They always do down here. The fellow who runs the mission serves pretty good food, I hear. Yeah. He's helped a lot of Joes over the rough spots. Let's get going on the stores. Yeah. The try cheap shops first is the best. Wait a minute. Look at that, Harrington. Huh? What? The place across the street. The bazaar. Oh, the guy dressing the window. Look at that suit he's hanging. Gray herringbone. Hey, that fits one of the suits on the list. Let's get a closer look at it. Yeah, that's it all right, Chief. I hope that label hasn't been removed. Be with you in a minute, gents. Be with us now. Come on out of the window and bring that herringbone with you. Ah, sure. Now, gents, this is a real good suit. Be perfect on one of you, gents. Yeah. Feel that. This suit cost over a hundred bucks new. But you have it for twenty-five. Get the label, Harrington. Let's have it, mister. Nobody'd ever know it wasn't new. If it needs alteration... Here it is, Chief. Yeah. Emporium Men's Shop, Salt Lake City, Utah. Where'd you get this suit? I bought it. Where else would I get it? Guy brought it in this morning. You know who he was? I don't know nothing, mister. You come in here to buy a suit or you... Hey, what's the matter? You the law? I'm the district attorney. Oh. This is hot. Burning. Now, what did he look like? Little guy, about 5'7", skinny, 130 pounds, maybe. How was his hair cut? What color? The hair... It was kind of, kind of dirty blonde, brown, I guess. Eyes were blue, maybe. You buy anything else from him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Show me this wallet for a buck. Here, here, take everything. Make it a total loss. Yeah, identification cards and everything stripped, Chief. Did you take anything out of here? No, no, I just shoved it in my pocket. The man we were after must have emptied them then, Harrington. If he removed the identification cards from those plastic cases, he might have left some fingerprints. Yeah. We'll take everything into the lab. Hey, look. Look. How about me? Can't you help me get my dough back? Give me some kind of a tip on what to do? I'll give you a tip. If I ever have to come in here again, you'd better know who you bought things from and who they belong to. Hello, Miss Miller. Chief in? He's on the phone to Salt Lake City. There. there, they just hung up. Is that the lab report he's been waiting for? Yeah. Mr. Garrett? Yes? Harrington's here with the lab report. Be right out. Chief will be pleased, Harrington. What did you get? Oh, hello, Chief. Plenty. There were prints on those plastic card holders from the wallet, all right. Most of them were Bradley's own prints. But there was one clear left thumb impression that wasn't. Any chance of identifying it? It's already been identified by wire photo through Washington. It matches the left thumbprint of an army deserter named Lenny Trevor. And the physical description checks perfectly. What's his home state? Came from right here in the city. Lived with his father and mother at, uh, uh, 1137 North Kilburn Street. That's in the 9th Precinct. Well, who does he belong to? Us? Or the army. We can decide that when we get him. Miss Miller. Yes, sir. Notify military police. If they're interested, they can send a squad along. We'll meet them at the 9th Precinct in 20 minutes. How do you be able to eat these things with no place to warm them up? You'll have to eat them cold, that's all. We've got a little money, Jess. He's got to go away. Couldn't we give him train fare? He's got money. Heaven only knows where he got it, but he's got it. Then why is he going like this? He's in some kind of trouble, me. It's more than the army. What? I don't know. And I don't want to know. If I did, I, I might turn him in. He's your own flesh and blood. Oh, don't worry. I won't do anything to hurt him. He'll always manage to hurt himself. Those eggs boiled yet? I'll see. That ought to be done. 
Oh, boiled. You don't like him that way. Well, he can't have him poached in a freight car. Jeff, who could that be? I don't know. You'd better go. Who's there? Open up. Who are you? What do you want? District Attorney, you'd better let me in, ma'am. I've got a warrant. Warrant for who? Lenny Tripper. He isn't here. You mind if I come in and make sure? Let him in, me. What? That's only my assistant at the back door, Mrs. Tripper. You mind letting him in, too? Better do it, me. There's nothing out back, Chief. Where's your son, Mr. Tripper? We don't know. We haven't seen him in a year since, since he joined the Army. How about in the last two months, since he deserted from the Army? You know about that. You've had a letter of notification. Is this your cap, Mr. Tripper? Yeah. Railroader, huh? Tower man. Give me a smoke, will you, me? You both seem like good people. If you want to help your son, you can start by helping us. All right. If you want to know, he, he's in Mexico. He, he's been there for more than a month. Mexico. Thanks. Where did you get these cigarettes? Where would I get them? I bought them. Not in this city, you didn't. Not with a state of Utah tax stamp on the package. These cigarettes were stolen from a man who was murdered less than 24 hours ago. Murdered? Oh, no. Yes, murdered. Shot five times. A man with a wife and two children. Oh, Chief. Here, look at this. All kinds of food. Box full of it. A dozen boiled eggs on the stove there, too. Mm-hmm. All right, Mr. Tripper, where is he? MPs have the house surrounded. He can't get out. He's not here. Tear the place apart. You won't find him. Where would I find him? Down at the railroad yard? No. No, we, we don't know where he is. What's all that food for, then? Where were you going to take it if you don't know where he is? The food isn't for him. Maybe not. But your husband works on the railroad, and your son is running away. They don't have dining cars on freight trains, do they? We told you all we know. Now leave us alone. Your boy is wanted for murder. The best thing you can do for him is to take us to him and ask him to surrender. <laughs> we didn't know about the murder. I didn't even know the army was after him. You just told me today. <laughs> Come on, Ryan. We'll find him ourselves. <laughs> Those yards are big, Chief. We ought to hold the father. He could get to him and tip him off. Well, that's why we're not holding him. You call the MPs. Ride with them. Cruise around the block after me and stop around the corner. I see. You're going to let the old man lead us to him. Yes. Yeah. Roar after me like we're going someplace. The trippers are watching us from the window. Right. Attorney, too. We know, Lenny. We know about every rotten thing. I wish he was dead. If it wasn't for your mother... Please, Pop. This is no time to pick on me. Pick on you? Killer. Pop, you've got to help me. I never want to see you again. There's a freight making up. It'll get you as far as Chicago. It pulls out in ten minutes. Chicago? The police know. They'll be combing the yards. You can't wait for the other one. Come on. The yard spread out. I think. All right, then. Turn the spotlight on him. Stop! Run, Lenny. Quick! Stop, Lenny. Tell him to stop, Mr. Tripper. Lenny, they're all over the place. You ain't taking me! Look out, Harrigan. He's pulling a gun. Lenny, no! 
He went into that boxcar, Harrington. I saw him. One of those MPs was hit. Over there by the switch. Get him and move him out of line of fire. Hey, back up, Come on out, lady. Go away! Go away or I'll kill all of you! This is the end of the road, boy. This is as far as you go. I'm coming for you. Keep. Here. Here, take this light. Flash it when I ask for it. Now! What? He's hit. He dropped his gun. Let him come. Lanny! Lanny! Bob! What'd you let him shoot me for? He's going to fall. Lift his head up, Lanny. He's. He's dead, Chief. I'm sorry, Mr. Tripper. You'd have killed somebody else. I know. It's better this way. I'm not crying for him. Not anymore. I'm thinking of his mother. You'd better come with me. I'll take you home. This is David Bryan. I hope you enjoy this case from the files of Mr. District Attorney. I'll be back in just a moment after this message from our sponsor. Now, here is the star of Mr. District Attorney, David Bryan, with a word about the program you have just heard. Lenny Tripper died as he had lived, violently. You may not remember this particular case. There have been too many like it. It's one of the reasons most states have laws against hitchhiking. Now, this is David Bryan inviting you to join us when we present our next case based on the facts of crime from the file of Mr. District Attorney. Mr. District Attorney was originated by Phillips H. Lord. (laughs) 